And when he saw them fall before the gate of the garden, he sent his word to Adam and Eve and raised them from their fallen state. And concerning the promise of the great five days and a half. Yeah, five days and a half is what he called it. God said to Adam, I was ordained on this earth days and years, and now in thy seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send the word <clears throat> that created thee and against which thou hast transgressed, the word that made thee come out of the garden and that raised thee when thou was fallen. Ye the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand. For Adam was thinking there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and sinless food, explained to him that these were 5,500 years, and how one would then come and save him and his seed. But God had before but God had before that made this covenant with our father Adam in the same terms where he came out of the garden when he was by the tree where of Eve took the fruit. Inasmuch as when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree and saw how God had then changed the appearance of it into another form and how it withered. And Adam went to it, he feared, trembled, and fell down. And God lifted him and made a covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden and saw the cherub with the sword of flesh and fire, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him, both Adam and Eve became afraid and saw him as to put them to death, so they fell on their faces with fear. But he had pity on them and showed mercy, and turning from them went up to heaven and prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, thou didst send me to wash the gates of the garden with the sword of fire. But when thy servants, Adam and Eve, saw me, they fell on their faces as though they were dead. Lord, what shall we do to thy servants? And God had pity and showed him mercy, and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve, and raised them up. And the Lord said to Adam, I told thee at the end of five days and a half, I would send my word and save thee. Strengthen your heart, and abide in the cave of treasures. And when Adam heard this from God, he was comforted, for he had told him how he would save him. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode. And indeed, Adam, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. As they came to Adam, wept over himself, and said to Eve, Look at this cave that we are prison in this world, and a place of punishment. What is it compared to the, with the garden? What is it, What is its narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is this gloom of this cavern compared with the light of the garden? What is this overhanging ledge of rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? What is the soil of this cave compared with the garden land, this earth strewn with stones, and that planted with delicious fruit trees? And Adam and Eve looked at thine eyes, and that wine which afore beheld angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. And now we do not see them, and our eyes have become flesh. They cannot see in a like manner as they saw before. So why are you driving by in the car? Then they stood in the cave, in their town, unknown to, unknown to us, but they knew well, and prayed. Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock and the lip of the cave that covered him over his, so that he could neither see heaven nor God's creatures. So he wept and smote heavily upon his breast until he dropped and was dead. And he sat weeping, for she believed he was dead. Then she arose, spread her hands to God, asking for mercy and pity. God, forgive me of my sin, the sin which I 
commit and remember it not against me. For I alone cause thy servant to fall from the garden, from light to darkness, from joy to this prison. Uh, look upon thy servant thus fallen and raise him from his death, that he may weep and repent of his sin which he committed through me. Take not his soul this once, but let him live and may stand after measure of his repentance. And do thy will before his death. But if you do take him, basically, don't leave me in this dungeon alone. I don't want to be here without him. And so God caused the slumber upon him. Oh, because you did take the bone from him to make me through your divine power. And she wept bitterly and fell upon Adam for her great sorrow. And God looked upon them, for they had killed themselves through great grief, but he would raise them and comfort them. He then sent word that they should stand and be raised forthwith. And the Lord said to Adam and Eve, You transgress on your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I have placed you. Of your own free will, you transgress through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalted state, such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were. And I made you come out of the garden into this land, rough and full of trouble. If only you had not transgressed my commandment and kept my law and not eaten of the tree, which I told you not to. Um, and there were fruit trees in the garden that were better than that one. But the wicked saint who continued not in his first estate, nor kept his faith, and who was no good intent towards me, and who, though I had created him, yet set me in awe and sought the Godhead, so that I hurled him down from heaven. He it is who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes until you ate of it by hearkening to him. Thus you transgressed my commandment, and therefore I have brought you upon all these sorrows, for I am God creator. When I created my creatures, did not intend to destroy them, but after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if, on the contrary, they still continue hardened in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. When Adam and Eve heard this, they wept and sobbed more, but they strengthened their hearts in God, because they now felt the Lord was to them like a father and a mother. And for this very reason, they wept before him and sought mercy. And he had pity and said, Adam, I have made my covenant, and I will not turn from it. Neither will I let thee return to the garden until the great five days and a half is fulfilled. He's worried about the beast getting him now. And then go back to the gates to cry some more outside the gates. There you go. Start the computer. And then he starts letting me have it. She's like, why is it, why is it thou hast me to be and to speak to me in this wise? He said to you. See thou not this water that was with us in the garden, that watered the trees of the garden and flowed out then? And we, when we were in the garden, did not care about it. But since we came out of the strange land, we love it and turn it to use for our body. But when he heard these words from him, she wept. And from the soreness of their weeping, they fell into that water and would have put it into themselves in it. So as to never return and behold the creation, for they looked upon the work of the creation. They felt must be put to an end of themselves. But God's merciful and gracious looked upon them thus lying in the water and nigh unto death, and sent an angel who brought them out of the water and laid them on the seashore as dead. Mm -hmm. 
The angel went up to God, <clears throat> was welcome, and said, God, thy creatures have breathed their last. And then God sent a forth to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. And Adam said, after he was raised, God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water, but since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. And God said, when you was under my command and was a bright angel, you didn't need water, basically, and then he said, but now you're supposed to wash your body in it and you have to drink it to build and grow because now you're like a beast. And then uh, they started crying again. And they said, don't, and he said, don't worry. I made the promise I'll let you back in the garden, but not until the time is been fulfilled. Then Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst, heat, and sorrow. And they decided they weren't going to drink the water, even if that means they were going to die. Even when this water comes into our inner parts, it will increase our punishments and that of our children that come after us. Because they knew that uh, when they withdrew from the water and drank, oh, that then they decided they weren't going to drink any of it at all. Went back to their cave. And then they hear a noise. And he's like, Eve, where are you? And she said, I'm standing in this darkness. He said, don't you remember? And then he gets all mad again. He's like, he says, where are you? And she said, no, I'm standing in this darkness. He then said to her, remember the bright nature in which we live while we abode in the garden? Eve, remember the glory that rested on us in the garden? <laughs> he's all been out of shape. He's like, bitch, we're in the dark! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> remember, you know, all the stuff about the garden? And we didn't know night or day. Think of the tree of life from below which flowed the water and that shed luster over us. Remember, Eve, the garden land and the brightness thereof? Think, oh, think of that garden in which was no darkness while we dwelt therein. Whereas no sooner do we come into this cave than darkness compassed around us until we no longer can see each other. And all the pleasure of this life has come to an end. Then Adam threw himself down on his chest. He and Eve, and they mourned the whole night. And then the next day, Adam beat himself and threw himself on the ground in the cave <laughs> from bitter grief and because of the darkness and lay there as dead. But he heard the noise he made in falling upon the earth, and she felt around for him until she found him like a corpse. Then she was afraid, speechless, but remained by him. But the merciful Lord looked on the death of Adam and on Eve's silence from fear of the darkness. And the word of God came to Adam and raised him from <laughs> and opened Eve's mouth that she might speak. Then Adam arose from the cave and said, God, wherefore has light departed from us and darkness come over us? Where dost thou lead us in this long darkness? Why wilt thou plague us with this? And this darkness, O oh Lord, where does it come from? And it is such that we cannot see each other. For so long as we were in the garden, we didn't know what darkness was. I was not hidden from Eve, uh, and she wasn't hidden from me. And so now she cannot see me, and no darkness came upon us. Basically, in the, the deal, and he's like, But she and I were in one bright light, and I saw her, and she saw me. Now we're in this cave of darkness, and we can't see each other. Lord, wilt thou plague us with this darkness? <laughs> Darkness does matter. Then God, who mercifully and full of pity heard Adam's voice, said, Adam, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and his host. But when he transgressed my commandment, I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became dark. And when he was in heaven, in the realms of light, he knew not of darkness. But he transgressed, and I made him fall from heaven upon the earth. And it was this darkness that came upon him and on thee, Adam, while in my garden, in obedience to me, did the bright light also rest. And when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh, over which I spread the skin, in order that it may bear cold and heat. If I had let my wrath fall heavily upon thee, I should have destroyed thee, and had I turned thee into darkness, 
it would have been as if I killed thee. But in my mercy, I made thee as you are. And when you transgressed my commandment, Adam, I drove you from the garden and then made you come forth into this land and commanded you to dwell in this cave. And darkness came upon you as it did upon him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, Adam, has this night deceived thee. It is not to last forever, but it is only twelve hours. When it is over, daylight will return. Sigh not, therefore, neither be moved, and say not in thy heart that this darkness is long and drives wearily, and say not in thy heart I pledge thee with it. Strengthen your heart, don't be afraid. Darkness is not a punishment, Adam. I have made the day and place the sun in it to give light in order that thy you and your children should do work. For I knew you would uh, sin and transgress and come out into this land, yet would I not force thee, nor be heard upon thee, nor shut up, nor give thee through thy fail or fall, nor thy coming out from the light into darkness. So I made this light and will to bring out children of the light from me and like unto thee. And then Basically, he says, Then I commanded you not to eat thereof, yet I knew Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive thee. So I made known to thee by the means of the tree not to come near him. And I told thee not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor to taste it, nor to even sit under it, nor to yield it. Had I not been and spoken to thee, Adam, concerning the tree, and had left thee without a commandment, and then you had sinned, it would have been my offense on my part for not having given you an order, but thou wouldst turn around and blame me for it. So I commanded you, warned you, and then you still fell, so that my creatures do not blame me, but blame breath on them alone. And Adam, I have made the day for thee, for thy children, for them to work and toil therein, and I have made the night for them to rest from their work, and for the beasts of the field to go forth by night and seek food. But little of darkness now remains, Adam, and daylight will stand. Mm -hmm. And Adam said to God, Lord, then take my soul and let me not be this wind any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. But God said to Adam, Verily I say unto thee, this darkness will pass from thee. Every day I have determined for thee until the fulfillment of my covenant, when I will save thee and bring you back into the garden to the abode of light thou longest for, where is no darkness, I will bring thee to it in the kingdom of heaven. And Adam, all this misery that has been made to take upon you, because of your transgression, will not free you from the hand of Satan, nor will it save you from him. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven, and shall become flesh of thy seed, and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest. Then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave, when I am in the flesh of thy seed. And that means when he comes in the flesh, and I, he takes on the sins of the world. And I, and I who am without years shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, of the end of days, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee, and God seeks the communion of God. Lord. Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of God's word to them that they shouldn't return to the garden until the fulfillment of days, but mostly because God told them that he should suffer for their salvation. Now they are starting to feel that because God's like, I'm going to have to suffer. To pay for what you started. Right. And they're starting to get them. The first sunrise. After this, Adam and Eve ceased to not stand in the cave, praying and weeping until morning dawned upon them. And saw the light return to them, they were strained from fear and strength in their hearts. And then Adam began to come out of the cave. And when he came out of the mouth of it, he stood and turned his face towards the east and saw the sun in the glowing rays and felt the heat on his body. And he was afraid of it and thought in his heart that the flame came forth to plague him. He wept then and smote upon his breast and fell upon the earth on his face and made his request saying, Lord, take me not, neither consume me, nor yet take away my life from earth, for he thought the sun was God. Inasmuch as while he was in the garden and heard the voice of God and the sound he made in the garden, he 
feared him out of never saw the brilliant light of the sun, nor neither did the flaming heat thereof touch his body. So he was afraid when the flaming rays of it reached him. He thought God meant to plague him there with all the days he had decreed for him. For Adam also said in thought, If God cannot plague us with darkness, behold, he has caused the sun to rise and plague us with burning heat. But while he was thus thinking in his heart, the word of God came unto him and said, Adam, rise and stand, the sun is not God, but it has been created to give light by day, of which I spake unto thee, is the case saying that dawn would break forth and there would be light by day. But I am God who comforted thee in the night, and God speaks to me in the silence. The chapter of the serpent. Then Adam and Eve came out of the mouth of the cave and went towards the garden. But as they drew near before the western gate from which Satan came, and he deceived Adam and Eve, they found the serpent that became Satan coming at the gate and sorrowfully licking at, the, licking at the dust and wriggling on his belly on the ground by reason of the curse that fell upon it from God. And whereas aforetime the serpent was most exalted of all beasts, now it was changed and become slippery and the meanest of them all, and it crept on its breast and went on its belly. And whereas it was the fairest of all beasts, it had been changed, and was become the ugliest of them all. Instead of feeding on the best food, now it turned to eat, to eat the dust. Instead of dwelling as before in the best places, now it lived in the dust. And whereas it had been the most beautiful of all beasts, all of which stood dumb as its beauty, it was now a lord of them. And again, whereas it had been the most beautiful of all, and again, whereas it had dwelt in one beautiful abode to which all other animals came from elsewhere, and where it drank, they also drank of the same. Now, after it had become venomous, by reason of God's curse, all beasts fled from its abode and would not drink of the water it drank, but fled from it. When the, uh, when the accursed serpent saw out of me, it swelled its head, stood on its tail, and with eyes blood red, did as, it, did as if it would kill them. It made straight for Eve and ran after her while Adam standing by wept because he had no stick in his hand to smite the serpent and knew not how to put it to death. But with a heart burning for Eve, Adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail. When it turned towards him, it said unto him, Adam, because of thee and Eve, I am slippery and go upon my belly. Then by reason of its great strength, it threw Adam down, Adam threw down Adam and Eve and pressed upon them as if it would kill them. But God sent an angel who drew the serpent away from them and raised them up. Then the word of God came to the serpent, and it said unto it, in the first instance, I made thee live and made thee go to go upon my belly, but I did not deprive thee of speech. Now, however, be thou dumb, and speak no more, thou and thy race, because in the first place has the ruin of my creatures happened through thee, and now thou wishest to kill them, then the serpent was struck dumb and spake no more, and a wind came to blow from heaven by command of God that carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve, who went on the seashore, and it landed in India. But Adam and Eve wept, and Adam said to him, Lord, when I was in the cave, I said this to thee, my Lord, that the beast of the field will rise against me and devour me, and cut my life off. Then Adam, by reason of what befallen him, smote upon his breast and fell upon the earth like a corpse. Then came to him the word of God, who raised him, and said to him, Adam, not one of these beasts will be able to hurt thee, because when I made the beast and other moving things come to thee in the cave, I did not let the serpent come with them, lest it should rise against you, make you tremble, and fear of it should fall into your heart. For I knew that the accursed one is wicked. Therefore I will not let it come near you with the other beasts. But now strengthen thy heart, and fear not, I am with thee unto the end of days. I have determined on thee. And Adam left, 
that God remove us to some other place, that the serpent may not come again near us, lest it bind thy handmaid Eve alone and kill her, for its eyes are hideous and evil. God said to Adam and Eve, Hence fear not, henceforth fear not, I will not let it come near you. I have driven it away from you from this mountain. Neither will I leave it and ought to hurt you. Then Adam and Eve worshipped God and gave him thanks and praised him for have, having delivered them from death. Then Adam and Eve went in search of the garden. It's the chapters of Adam and Eve attempt suicide. And the heat beat like a flame on their faces, and they sweated from the heat but before the Lord. For the place was they left was not unto a high mountain facing the western gate of the garden. Then Adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain. His face was torn and his flesh was flayed. Much blood flowed from him, and he was not unto death. Meanwhile, Eve remained standing on the mountain, weeping over him, thus lying, and she said, I wish not to live after him, for all that he did to himself was to me. Then she threw herself after him and was torn and, and stashed by the stones, and remained lying as dead. But the merciful God, who looked upon his creatures, looked upon Adam and Eve as they lay dead, and he can afford and raise them. Said Adam, all this misery which thou hast brought, brought upon thyself will not avail against my will, neither will it alter the covenant of the 5,500 years. <laughs> 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 then Adam said to God, I wither in the heat, I am faint from walking, and I loathe of this world, and I know not when thou wilt bring me out of it to rest. Then the Lord said to him, Adam, it cannot be at present. Not until thou hast ended thy days, and I shall bring thee out of this wretched land. And Adam said to God, When I was in the garden, I knew nothing of heat, nor languor, neither moving about, nor trembling, nor fear. But since I came to this land, all this affliction has come upon me. And God said to Adam, So long as thou wast keeping my commandment, my light and my grace rested on thee. But when thou transgressed my commandment, for all misery befell you in this land. And Adam wept, O Lord, do not cut me off for this, neither smite me with heavy plagues, nor yet repay me according to my sins. For we of our own will did transgress thy commandment, and forced us by all, and sought to become gods like unto thee, when Satan and his enemy deceived us. And God said to Adam, Because thou hast borne fear and trembling in this land, languor and suffering, treading and walking about, going upon this mountain and dying from it, I will take all this upon myself in order to save thee. And Adam looked more and said, God have mercy on me, so far as to take upon me that which I will do. But God took his word from Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve stood on their feet, and Adam said to Eve, Gird thyself, and I will gird myself. She and she girded herself as Adam told her. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees, which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together, mingled it, and gave it as an offering. Yet now look upon our blood, which is offered upon these stones and accepted out of our hands, like the clay we used to sing unto thee at first and in the garden. And Adam began to make more, more requests unto God. Can the merciful God, good and lover of then looked upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood which they had held offering to him without an order from him to do so. But he wandered at them and accepted their offering. And God sent his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. And he smelt the sweet favor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, Adam, as thou hast shed blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou did die, Adam, so also will I die. And as thou did build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou did offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon 
and altar on the earth. And as thou didst do for forgiving for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sin, and blot out transgressions in it. And now behold, I have accepted thy offering, Adam, that the days of the covenant where I have found thee are not fulfilled. When they are, I'll bring you back to the garden. Now therefore, strengthen your heart, and sorrow come, make me an offering, and I will be favorable with thee. So God knew that Adam had in his thoughts that he should often kill himself and make an offering <laughs> of him of his blood. <laughs> Therefore he did say unto him, Adam, do not again kill thyself as thou did by throwing thyself down that mountain. But Adam said unto God, It was in my mind to put an end to myself at once for having transgressed thy commandments and for having come out of the beautiful garden and for the bright light of which thou hast deprived me and for the praises which poured forth from my mouth without ceasing and for the light that covered me. Yet of thy goodness, O God, do not away with me altogether, but be favorable to me every time I die, and bring me to life. <laughs> <laughs> and thereby it will be made known that thou art a merciful God, who willest not that one should perish, who lovest not that one should fall, and who does not condemn any cruelly, badly, and by whole destruction. Then Adam remained silent, and the word of God came to him, and blessed him, and comforted him, and covenant, covenanted with him that he would save him at the end of the day, determined upon him. Then this was the first offering Adam made to God, and so it became his custom to do so. Then Adam took Eve, and they returned to the cave of treasures where they dwelt. But when they neared it, and saw it from afar, heavy sorrow fell upon Adam and Eve when they looked at it. And Adam and Eve, then Adam and Eve, said, then Adam said to Eve, When we were on the mountain, we were comforted by the word of God that conversed with us, and the light that came from the east and shone over us. But now the word of God is hidden from us, and the light that is shone over us is so changed as to disappear and let darkness and sorrow come upon us. And we are forced to enter this cave, which is like a prison, wherein darkness covers us so that we are parted from each other and can't see each other. When Adam had said these words, they wept and spread their hands before God, for they were full of sorrow. And they entreated God to bring the sun to them, to shine on them, so that the darkness returned not upon them, and they not again under, and they come not again under the covering of the rock. And they wish to rather, wish to die rather than see darkness. And God looked at Adam and Eve, and upon their great sorrow, and upon all they had done with a fervent heart, on account of all the trouble they were in, instead of their former well-being on account of all the misery that came upon them in a strange land. Therefore God was not wroth with them, nor impatient with them, but he was long-suffering and forbearing towards them, as towards the children he had created. Then came the word of God to Adam, and he said to him, Adam, as for the son, if I were to take it and bring it to thee, days, hours, years, and months would all come to naught, and the covenant I had made with thee would never be fulfilled. But thou should then be turned and left in a long plague, and no salvation would be left to be forever. Yet ye rather bear long and calm thy soul, while thou abidest night and day, until the fulfillment of days, and the time of my covenant is come, then shall I come and save thee, Adam, for I do not wish that thou be afflicted. And when I look at all the good things which you did, which thou did live, and why thou camest out of them, then would I willingly show you mercy. But I cannot alter the covenant that's gone out of my mouth, else would I have brought you back into the garden already. When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, I shall show thy seed, be in thy seed mercy, and bring you into the land of violence, and back into the garden. these words, and he and Eve worshipped God in their hearts were comforted. They were in the cave after their custom, while tears flowed from their eyes, sorrow and wailing came from their hearts, and they wished their soul would leave their body. And Adam and Eve stood praying in the darkness of mind that came upon them. 
Adam was with from Eve and she from him, and they remained standing in prayer. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued to pray, and how God communed with them and comforted them, and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his host, and in his hands was a flashing fire, and they were a great light. He then placed his stone near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter it into it by reason of their prayers, and he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve, while his host began to sing praises, and Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light he should think within himself that it was a heavenly light and that Satan's hosts were angels, and that God had sent them to watch at the cave and to give light in the darkness in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby, and a second time humble him before God. When therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts as they were trembling, and Adam said to Eve, Look at the great light in those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside, that do not come into us. Do not tell us what they say or why they're here. What's the meaning of this life? If it were from God, they would have come in the cave, and they would tell us of their errands. Then Adam stood up and prayed to God with a fervent heart and said, Lord, is there in the other world another God that thou who created angels and filled them with light and sin to keep us, who would come with them? But lo, we see these hosts at the mouth of the cave, they are in great light, and they sing a lot of praises. If they are of some other God than you, then tell us. If they're sent by you to inform me of the reason for which thou hast sent them. No sooner than Adam said this, than the angel from God appeared into the cave and said to him, Adam, fear not, this is Satan and his host. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time he has come to you in a similitude of an angel of light in order that when you worshipped him he might install you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the faint he had assumed and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, This hideous form has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it. Therefore he did transform himself into an angel of life. Then the angel drove away Satan and the host from Adam and Eve. Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went with him. Are you recording him reading? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to believe what I got on film either. Are you listening? Yes, absolutely I'm listening. I'm taking it all in. But when they, when they wily, when the wily saint saw them, that they were going to the garden to gather, Can you turn the computer on for me, please? For their hearts were towards it, and they could get no consolation for having left it. But when the wily saints saw them, and that they were going to the garden, he gathered together his host and came in appearance upon clouds, and ten on pursuing them. And when Adam and Eve saw him thus in the vision, they thought they were angels of God come to comfort them about their having left the garden or to bring them back into it again. And Adam spread his hands to God, beseeching them to make him understand what they were. Then Satan, the hater of all good, said to Adam, Adam, I am the angel of the great God, who holds the host of this ground. God sent me to take me and bring thee to the border of the garden, northward, to the shore of the clear sea, and bathe thee and Eve in it raise you to your former gladness and say you return again to the garden. These words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. Yet God withheld his word from Adam and did not make him understand at once, but waited to see his strength. 
but if he would overcome a thief, would, would he be overcome if he was a gardener? Would he prevail? Then Satan called to Adam and Eve again, Behold, we go to the sea of water, and they began to go. And Adam and Eve followed them at some little distance.
gold that it may shed light over thee by night, the incense that thou smellest sweet savor, and the merge comfort thee in thy sorrow. And when Adam heard these words from God, he worshiped before him, he gave thanks, because he had dealt mercifully with them. And God commanded the three angels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, to each bring what they he had brought and give it to Adam, and they did so one by one. Suriel and Salafiel to bear up Adam and Eve and bring them down from the top of the mountain and take them to the cave. There they laid the gold on the south side and sent on the east and them were on the west for the mountain of the cave was on the north. The angels comforted Adam and Eve and their parted. Then the three things did God give to Adam on the third day after Gave her to know the same. He then took her and they both returned to the cave. 
these things happen to them the second time they went down to the water, seven days after coming out of the garden. They fasted in the water, 35 days, altogether 42 days, they had left the garden. And on the morning of the 43rd, they came out of the cave weeping. Their bodies were lean and they were parched from hunger and thirst, from fasting and praying, and from their heavy sorrow. When they came out of the cave, they went up to the mountain to the west of the garden and stood there and prayed that God forgive them.
now they're all freaked out because of, from the big trees which that they would hide and want that new day with maybe. Do <clears throat> thou not be saved in their leaves with which we cover ourselves and we were stripped of our bright nature, but now we know not what misery and suffering may come upon us from eating them. So therefore, ye, let us restrain ourselves and not eat of them, and let us ask God to give us the fruit of the tree of life. And so they restrained and didn't need to save. Drink of the water of this land. 